I've been putting this video off and this task for quite a while. I've been thinking about how I'm going to get electrics in the van and uh, watched lots of different YouTube videos and about different elements of it. And I thought, well, how am I going to do this to suit me? Because what you've got to do is think, well, what are you going to use your van for? What are you going to need power for? <clears throat> now, we're expecting to not use campsites, so we're not going to have shore power, hook up or whatever, very often. So we're going to need a system that will give us power for a few days at a time, because we're never at this stage likely to go away for more than five or six days, maybe a week at the most. So I need enough power for that. Got to think, what am I going to run? Well, the reality is, I'm going to need lighting. I'm going to need something that will power getting water to a tap. Perhaps a bit of electrical support for the cooker, for I don't know, any safety devices on it. A way of charging my phone, or phones, tablets, that kind of thing. I'd love an electric kettle, and I'd love, you know, to be able to use a microwave, but I do appreciate that really power-hungry items are not really uh, something that I can think of on the power that I'm looking to have for a few days. So I think that about covers it. So I don't really need hundreds of amps of power sitting there waiting to power things. So that's the background to the decisions that I've made so far. Right, van, basically it's a 12 volt system. So you might as well stick with 12 volts for as much as you can. Because even if you didn't have anything else, you can plug something into your uh, cigarette socket in the, ca in, the, you know, in the front and power it that way. So thinking of 12 volts, decided on using a leisure battery system to power the vast majority of things that I'm expecting to use in it. So, started looking at batteries. What a minefield that is. I eventually decided that as I'm at the beginning end of this, I'm not living in the van, to go for probably one of the least expensive options. I did try to convince myself to have a lithium battery. And it was completely sold on the glass mat type batteries, on the gel batteries, absolutely lovely. But the reality is I kept coming back to the price. And every time you added these extra technologies in, it did increase the price quite dramatically. Um, and I thought, as I'm really not sure what I'm doing first off, rather than spend a fortune, let's spend a bit. If it doesn't work out, I can probably sell it on. So I bought pretty much the cheapest standard of battery that I could get, which is a, a wet cell leisure battery. When they say leisure battery, it's slightly different inside to support long-term draw of power rather than the th sudden thrust of power that you need to start a car. I think that's the main difference. And 110 amps, I think it only cost me about £70. Once you start looking at gel batteries, for the same 110 amps, I'd have been looking at £200. Looking at the other technology, lithium, the ones that I could see, they seem to be in the multi-hundred, five, six hundred pound bracket. I think they're fantastic. I really would like to use them. However, I've got to be realistic. I don't want to spend thousands of pounds on a van that I'm going to use for a few trips out. Eventually, I might look at upgrading. I won't have spent a fortune in the meantime, and I'll at least have more knowledge about it then. The big disadvantage with the wet cell batteries is that actually the power you can draw off should only be 50% of the rating. What that means is a 110 amp battery, I should only run it down to about 55, 50 amps before I recharge it. Reason being, it affects the chemistry inside. Gel batteries, you can run a little bit lower. Lithium batteries, you can run completely flat. So there are big advantages to them, but it does come back to, it comes at a price. The things I'm looking at running are not 
overly power hungry. So 120, 140 pounds, that's again spending perhaps five or 600. That's the route I've gone at the moment. So you've got the battery in your vehicle. You've actually got to get a charge to it. So the thing to use is a split charge relay. And not a simple one. All you have to do is connect the battery that's in your car, your van, that starts the van, via this to that one. And connect that one, earth, neutral, back to the other battery. When your van's running and it's making enough power, it will use this to charge that battery. So I've got to wire that in. So that's going to be in this video. To get the power out to do something sensible with it, I need to connect this up to it. And all this is, is a simple fuse box. So the power from the battery comes into here and anything I connect to here, such as lights, the cooker ignition, um, the water pump, will get 12 volts and be protected by a fuse. So I can take a power line from here to the item, from the item back to earth, and it should power it. So this particular video I'm looking at putting together how I put the split charge in to charge the battery, positioning the battery, and then connecting the battery up to this so that I can power other things. I'm going to do a number of other videos extending that because there's like I say it can be overwhelming but this one is basically 12 volt power source from the battery it being charged by the vehicle. I bought a kit online for the uh, split charge relay uh, wiring I thought it's better than trying to just find all the bits yourself I think it was not a bad idea they sent me this wiring diagram and as you can see a whole raft of parts to go with it. Let's see about putting it all together. Having checked through my uh, crimping tools for things I realised very quickly I didn't have anything that was uh, heavy enough for this. So I uh, thought new tool time. Having watched a, a couple of YouTube videos on uh, how to crimp these things or solder them which was a thought I came to the conclusion that the tool that I think I'll get on best with was this kind. Looks like bolt cutters, but instead it has different jaws. I think they call them dies, so that you can uh, use them for the different sizes of these uh, connectors. Now there's different size, they call them dies, and you can swivel these around. Now the numbers on them, I'm not 100% sure, I thought it was 16 gauge. It looks my next choice down is 10. And away we go again. That isn't going to pull off very easily. So I think I'll call that a do. Now I'm going to put some heat shrink on from the other end. I think that'll be fine. So it was a 10 for these, which was smaller than I expected, but hey, why not? Seems to have worked a treat. I'm happy with that. Apparently, the thing with the crimping is it actually does partially fuse the wires inside as well. So there we go, good to go. Next thing to do is to sort out the relay. This is a, a device that senses when the vehicle's running and the battery's charging at above a certain voltage. When it is, it switches on so that it then charges the leisure battery. Quite simple to wire up. The vehicle battery, which I've already got a wire in the uh, van working from, connects to that one. A connection from that one to the leisure battery and this you connect to earth. Once you've got all the connections in place it simply just sits there and does its job, I hope. So what I need to do is to put one of these on the end from the main battery in the van 
and then make a shorter lead that's going to go to the leisure battery. I forgot I have to put in a 100 amp fuse between that and the actual battery. Not to worry, I just had to cut this short, put a different connector on the end. And what I've done now, I've got another wire ready to go off. This was a disability van at one stage. So it already had 16 millimeter wire, which is the spec I needed, running all the way from the battery back to the back of the van. So what I've done is I've reappropriated that, put it through the floor, this to be here like that, and screw that onto something there, and then this is going to come down to the battery. So what I need to do now is find a board that I'm going to put in here. I also want to make a shelf for some of the other electrical items so that uh, I've got somewhere to put them and it's nice and sturdy. I also needed to secure this to the board as well. So let's have a think about that now. There was no point in the video in how I was going to make the backboards because literally it's, uh, it's how it went together rather than by any real design. All of that's going to be hidden away behind uh, in a cupboard anyway. So as long as it keeps everything secure, that's the fine thing. I've got the original wire that's not connected to the battery yet coming to the split charge relay. I've got a split charge relay going to a 100 amp fuse and then that's going to be connected to the positive side of the battery. On the negative side, a wire that's connected to the chassis underneath. It's a reasonably fully charged battery, but it's not charging at the moment. Stop. Fifteen hundred. Two thousand five hundred. That's it all finished now. Tested it. It appears to charge when the engine revs up. Uh, now it's just a case of seeing how it works uh, in actual practice. So the next thing I need to do is connect it so that I can take the 12 volts off it and use it for lights and the fan and things like that. Before I started putting in insulation I'd already decided to put in wires that ran to various parts of the van. I added the isolator late on in setting up this 12 volt supply. I started to think, well, what when I'm storing it or if I'm leaving the van for a while, do I want to leave the 12 volt all hooked up with my wiring throughout the van? I thought, well, it might make it easier if instead of uh, having to just disconnect it at the battery, if I add an isolator switch in. And this is so simple, you know, wire from the battery to this, wire from that to the 12 volt supply fuse box 
and Bob's your uncle. When you're leaving it, just turn it off. That's it. No 12 volt supply to anywhere in the van other than the normal van stuff that Ford put in. I've got a fuse box. But any wiring that comes back to the fuse box, I can earth at the other end. And if it's for a light or something small, that should just work. I've also included an earthing strap. So anything that actually wants to be earthed or taken straight back to the battery, I can run a wire coming back to that and that's connected straight back to the battery. As part of the 12 volt system, I've also decided to put in some USB chargers. Now I've decided to actually build them into the side panelling of the van. I might need to move them eventually, but at the moment this is the side where we'll certainly be uh, having the bed and having the seat. So I'm going to have one at each end of what would be the seating area. I'd already put wiring through from where the uh, electricity supply is, so I just need to connect this up now. I'm running the neutral wire back to the battery on these rather than earthing it to the uh, chassis mainly because when it's a power charger I just feel that that's probably better practice so I've set up a temporary earth on the other end I've clipped it to the power not sure whether the light being on is a good idea um, that should be okay we'll have to see what impact that has but that's it connected works perfectly now I still need to think about the 240 volt hookup that I might have and any solar panel. If you've enjoyed what you've watched, if it's been helpful, have a look at our other videos. Maybe subscribe to us. But anyway, thanks for watching. I do hope it's been helpful in some way.